When we think of flags in relation to pirates, we usually jump immediately to the Jolly Roger and the classic skull and crossbones design. The skull and crossbones design is attributed originally to Captain Emmanuel Wynne, a French pirate from the late 17th century, whose flag was a skull and crossbones above an hourglass. The skull symbolising death, and the hourglass symbolising that time was running out for any ship being pursued by the pirates. It could also have signified that death was drawing near, or that for the crew of any ship being pursued, the time of their death was approaching. Some pirates even added wings to their hourglass motifs to symbolise time flying away. Probably the other most famous pirate flag design is that of the skull and cross cutlasses, flown by Coleco Jack Rackham, or the crossbones design used by Black Bart Roberts. We associate the name the Jolly Roger as being one of these classic pirate flag designs, however the term was used loosely to denote any flag being flown by a pirate ship. There are several theories as to where the term Jolly Roger originated. It may have come from the term Jolly Rouge, meaning pretty red in French. The first pirate flags were usually solid red or black before the classic crossbones design was flown. Solid black was used to denote death, and that the pirate ship was a death ship. Black also had connotations with plague, as plague ships would fly a black flag or a black flag with a white cross, indicating to others to steer clear. A solid red flag or a blood red flag indicated that no quarter would be given should a ship try to evade the pirates or fight back against them. Unless a ship surrendered immediately to the pirates, a red flag often meant that the pirates would kill the crew to the last man, even if they chose to surrender after trying to fight the pirates off. The crew of the merchant ship would likely have felt more relieved if they spotted a black flag, as this was commonly used by pirates to indicate that they'd tolerate a peaceful surrender. Pirates flying red flags were typically more cutthroat in their approach. Surrendering to pirates flying a red flag didn't necessarily mean that they wouldn't fire upon you anyway and didn't guarantee fair treatment upon capture. Historian David Merion, or maybe that's David, argues that the term Jolly Rouge may have instead originated from the red waistcoat worn by the Welsh pirate Bartholomew Black Bart Roberts, or as it is in Welsh, Barty V. Black Bart is known to have dressed in extravagant clothing, and as well as his red waistcoat, he wore a large red feather in his hat and was covered in gold necklaces and jewels, even when going into battle. It is possible that the term Jolly Rouge was used by French merchantmen to describe the infamous Black Bart Roberts, and it eventually began to be used to denote his flag, and then any flag flown by a pirate vessel. There are yet more theories as to where the term Jolly Roger may have come from. The term may have come from pirates being associated with the devil, or as being demons of the sea, or sea devils. The folk term for the devil was Old Scratch, or Old Nick. This is detailed in a classical dictionary of the Volga Tongue, written 1785, which gives the definition as, um, well, the angel first employed in forming women had forgot to cut their parts of generation, which the devil undertook to do by the following contrivance. He placed himself in a kind of saw pit with a scythe fixed to a stick in his hand and directed the women to straddle over it. The pit being too deep for the length of his instrument, he gave the tall women only a moderate scratch, but the little women, by the shortness of their legs, coming more within his reach, he maliciously gave them monstrous gashes, or nicks, whence he was called Old Scratch and Old Nick. 1785 was wild. The term Old Nick was possibly broadened to Old Roger, as Old Roger was also used as a synonym for the devil. This may have been warped into the term Jolly Roger over time. A newspaper article from 1723 describes the hanging of 26 pirates who had sailed under the infamous Ned Lowe. The article supports the theory that the crew used the term Old Roger to describe their flag. Their black flag, under which they had committed abundance of piracies and murders, was affixed to one corner of the gallows. It had in it the portraiture of death, with an hourglass in one hand and a dart in the other, striking into a heart, and three drops of blood delineated as falling from it. This flag they called Old Roger, and used to say they would live and die under it. There were other references to the devil in pirate flags. Some flags had depictions of horned skeletons to represent the devil, or of glasses being raised to toast the devil. Both of these are shown in this flag that Blackbeard didn't fly, so this may not be wholly accurate. Black Bart Roberts is known to have flown a flag showing himself and his skeleton holding an hourglass, although it could be interpreted as a drinking glass to symbolise a toast to the devil, so there may be some historical merit to this. Yet more theories as to the origin of the term Jolly Roger are that it is derived from the term vagabond or rogue. The term vagabond was derived from the old French vagabond or vacabond and the Latin vagabundus, both of which roughly mean wandering about. In Latin, the word roger meant to ask, and this may have been corrupted into Roger. In the 1540s, a Roger was a begging vagabond. Roger was shortened to rogue sometime around the 1560s. Rogue mean used to describe someone of ill repute, 
an idle vagrant, sturdy beggar, or one of the vagabond class. Rogue was also used as slang for a begging vagabond. The term Jolly Roger may have been a corruption of these ideas and started being used to describe the pirates and eventually the flag they sailed under as what were pirates but vagrants of the sea. The addition of the Jolly may have been in reference to how many pirates enjoyed being pirates and the perception that pirates had a carefree and jolly time whilst being at sea. To throw a whole other argument into the mix, Jolly Roger may have in fact originated from eastern pirates who had the title Ali Raja, meaning King of the Sea. This was then corrupted into Ali Roger, or Holly Roger, and eventually Jolly Roger. I think I subscribe more to the idea that the term Jolly Roger was derived from the language used at the time, not as a result of individual pirates becoming famous enough for their nickname to become synonymous with piracy in general. So, what were some of the most famous Jolly Rogers? As time went on and the golden age of piracy began to reach its apex, pirate captains and crews began to embellish their flags. Instead of flying a solid black or red flag, motifs were added so that their flag could stand out from others. Flags were often a point of pride for the crew. The pirate ship was the pirate's own personal state, a kingdom in which they were beholden only to one another. It also helped a pirate captain and crew garner their reputation among merchant seafarers. Pirates such as Blackbeard were so feared that if a crew knew it was Blackbeard who pursued them, they would surrender immediately, whereas if it was anyone else, they may have tried their luck at escaping or fighting back. Most commonly added were bones or skulls to symbolise death and mortality. The majority of pirate flags had these in some capacity. Black Bart Roberts had several flags, most showing skeletons or death heads. In one version of his flag, he depicted himself stood on top of two skulls labelled ABH and AMH, a Barbadian head and Martiniquean head, probably in reference to wanting to cut off the heads of the governors of Barbados and Martinique, both of whom had sent pirate hunters after Roberts. Pirate flags also commonly featured weapons like daggers, spears and flaming swords, either as a weapon alone or as a figure or an arm holding them. It's thought weapons were used to show the pirates' proclivity for violence and fighting and their willingness to bear arms. Dee Bonnet, famously known as the Gentleman Pirate, had a flag showing a dagger and a heart set either side of a skull. It's theorised that his flag was designed to look like a set of scales and the dagger and heart represented the balance between life and death. Naked figures were sometimes used usually as a way of showing the pirates' lack of shame or as a homage to their debaucherous lifestyle. Both the flags of Walter Kennedy and John Quelch had naked figures, although if Quelch ever flew this flag, it is not 100% certain. My personal favourite has got to be Ned Lowe's, fairly disconcerting flag showing a red skeleton on a black background. I think this one takes the prize for creepiest pirate flag, particularly considering Ned Lowe's reputation for unwarranted violence against captured crews. Lowe was apparently quite fond of cutting off prisoners' noses and ears, there's even a story about him cutting off a man's lips and then feeding them back to him. Don't think Lowe was a sort of yo-ho, bottle of rum type of pirate. So, when did pirates fly the Jolly Roger? You might think that a ship would always have its flag raised, but this was not the case in the Age of Sail, and ships had their flags raised far less often than you might expect. Mainly this was just for practical reasons, as flags constantly exposed to the elements would deteriorate quickly. They'd become worn and faded if they were left out too long. So a ship's flag fading would present a bit of an issue, as if it faded too much, it may become difficult to distinguish by other ships. Flags could also not be, or at least it was best practice for them not to be, blown in strong winds or hard rain, to reduce the chance of them wearing, or being ripped free of the mast altogether. There was also little point in raising flags whilst at sea, unless you were doing it to communicate with another vessel. The distance at which a flag could be spotted by another ship was far less than it is depicted in movies, so flags at sea were far more for communicating between ships in a convoy or fleet as opposed to during encounters with unknown vessels, for the most part. Most commonly, flags were flown in harbour, particularly by merchant and private ships, or were flown prior to going into or during battle with navy ships. Primarily, a pirate ship would raise its flag when encountering a merchant vessel that the crew sought to take as prize. However, this was not always the Jolly Roger. A good majority of pirates started out as privateers, fighting for their respective nations during the War for Spanish Secession. Pirates during this time were liable to host privateering flags, whether they were legitimate privateers or not. Many privateers dabbled in piracy anyway, committing unsanctioned raids on vessels under the pretense of legitimacy that a letter of mark offered. Many pirates also used the flags of their own nation or of other nations so as to appear like official navy vessels or as common merchant vessels. This was also common among warring navy ships, where they would raise the flags of opposing nations or flags of nations allied with their enemy so that they could sail close enough to the enemy ships to launch a surprise attack. 
The use of false flags was so prolific that the use of flags at sea became regarded as almost pointless, as flags offered no guarantee that another ship was friend or foe. It was only when the War for Spanish Secession was concluded and the Peace Treaty of Utrecht 1713 was signed that pirates began to hoist black flags with regularity and openly declare themselves pirates. With the signing of the treaty, not only was there no longer the option of pretending to be privateers, as there was no longer a need for them in the West Indies, but many sailors felt as if their nation had abandoned them. Virtually overnight, the signing of the peace treaty between England, France and Spain had made all privateering sailors unemployed and given many an incentive for independence. Flags that came to be known as the Jolly Roger would be flown for many reasons. Primarily, it was when a pirate ship was trying to scare a vessel into submission. Hoisting the black was essentially flag code for, you're being robbed, hand it over. The Jolly Roger was used when there was no pretense that the pirate ship was anything other than a pirate ship. Seeing a black flag was often enough to scare a crew so badly that they would offer no resistance whatsoever and the pirates could potentially rob them without firing a shot. Seeing a black flag would also have the effect of causing dissension in the ranks. While pirates were greatly feared, many sailors were also envious of them and the apparent freedoms they had. Life aboard ship in the age of sail was hard and life aboard a pirate ship probably appeared far easier and the relative tyranny present in many merchant and naval vessels. There is an account of this from Captain Snellgrave, who attributes his capture by pirates as being because many of his crew wished to join them. Snellgrave accounted that 11 of his men joined with the pirates immediately upon the boarding of his ship, even including his first mate. Snellgrave and his crew of 45 were initially captured by a small boat and 12 pirates. I think it's possible that pirates raised the black flag in some instances, because they knew it had the power to cause this kind of disarray in a crew and a divided crew was far easier to attack than a united one. Of course pirates, and ships in general, didn't just fly one flag, there was a whole host of flags used at sea, but we'll cover that in a part two. Did you know that the Jolly Roger is still flown today? Diverting slightly from the golden age of piracy to the modern day, the Jolly Roger is often flown by submarine crews on returning to port, a tradition that stretches back to the First World War. At the launching of the first British submarine, Arthur Wilson, first Sea Lord Admiral, as well as many others within the Royal Navy, held the opinion that submarines were just not very sporting. In fact, what he said is that submarines were underhand, unfair and damned un-English, before going on to say something along the lines of all submariners should be hanged for piracy. Royal Navy submariners, themselves often being a bit on the roguish side, took to the idea and started flying the Jolly Roger on their way back into port. It was quite common for submarines to have their own flag, a practice that carries on to this day. Initially, submarines would fly a whole host of Jolly Rogers, by the end, they ended up flying so many flags that many would just amalgamate this into one distinguished Jolly Roger. The submarine crews were known to decorate their flags with motifs to indicate certain actions they'd undertaken. Back in the day, this was ships sunk or participation in cloak and dagger activities. Even as soon as 2017, the American submarine, the Jimmy Carter, returned to port flying the Jolly Roger, although it's anyone's guess as to why a nuclear attack submarine returned to port flying Old Roger. The US Navy certainly didn't offer any answers. And that's all. Join us for part two and beat to quarters. I'm Sealegs. We're done here.